Hey everybody, what's going on? Hexlex here. Got another Master Duel video for you. So I feel like it's been a minute since I've done, like, an event video on the YouTube channel. Uh, it's usually because I, I honestly don't find a lot of Master Duel events terribly interesting. I, I gotta be honest, it's the same is true of this one. But I did actually get some, like, pretty nice games in. Uh, and this isn't a deck I've seen, or at least the style of this deck uh, isn't one I've seen a lot of people using. So... I figured I'd talk a little bit about Gishkis, right? So I was actually going to use Rescue Waste, which I've seen a lot of people using in the Ritual event. Uh, funnily enough, a deck without Ritual Monsters, but I really like maximizing out my gems for every event. It's a lot of how I'm able to stay uh, ahead with pack releases and purchases and all that stuff. So um, even though the Ritual Summon missions, I think will give you a total of 200 gems, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to try to go for those anyway. So. 20 Ritual Summons, wanted to get those in, and since I already have the two Naramanas, I figured I would go ahead and just build out a Gishki deck. Now, uh, I don't have the other Gishki uh, UR Ritual Monster. Oh, hang on. If I could spell, that is. Let's see here. Yeah, the Zeal Gigas, I think I did actually pull one from the packs, but I guess I ended up disenchanting it, but... Uh, in any case, I don't like crafting URs just for events, I don't ever do it, so uh, I figured to fill up my ritual slots here, I just go ahead and max out on Evagushki Goose Kraken, or Gus Kraken, however you want to say it. Uh, this is a card that has actually seen quite a bit of competitive play, uh, although uh, it's not one of the more popular cards out there, uh, because this is often just used to hand loop in certain formats, actually, for an entire opponent's hand, I think, with uh, certain past iterations of this deck, but... Here in Master Duel, there's not really anything too obscene you can do with it. Uh, although, we will see a game where we get to hand loop, I think, up to three times. Uh, which is usually only doable with this particular build if you happen to open the Salvage as well. So, uh, that's basically the idea of this deck is we're looking to either hand loop our opponent a couple of times and or throw out a Naramanas, uh, ideally with the Aquamere Illusion off the Focused Aquamere, and get a couple of Negates in as well. Uh, the thing about event metas, and this one is no different, is that they are often a lot less powerful uh, than a regular meta, right? So, even though that might not sound that great to, you know, just, just hand loop a couple of times. <laughs> no, it is pretty good, but uh, a couple of, that might sound like a, a kind of a weak board, but, you know, again, that's kind of in the mindset of ranked meta, right? Uh, when it comes to the event meta, really what I've been seeing a lot of is Mikanko, mostly. Uh, going second Mikanko is pretty good. That also makes this deck actually pretty good because with the Goose Crack and hand looping, you actually do want to be going first. So uh, a lot of the times you'll lose the coin flip, but your opponent will have you go first uh, in this particular format anyway. So uh, I think this ends up being a pretty good choice as a result of that. And also, like I said, uh, the Inera Modest Negation is actually really, really good. Um, because it not only negates the monster effect, but also shuffles it back into the deck. So, uh, you often kind of end up looping your opponent's cards back that way as well. As far as, like, the Gishi cards go, we got the usual cast here, you know. Uh, we're maxing out on Shadows and Divisions, uh, so that way we can get to our, obviously, our Ritual stuff as soon as possible. Uh, also, we definitely want those two cards with Salvage, like... Uh, honestly, opening these two plus salvage is like an ideal opening hand, like that's like perfect, so. Uh, on top of that, we're maxing out on Grimnesses to Abyss in case we like open one or draw one or need to do one on a later turn for follow-up plays. Uh, we're also playing three Butuniful Princess, which is really just another means of getting the Grimness out of the deck. So, uh, in this build, this is kind of just like playing three more copies of Grimness with... Grimness really being the only thing we want to normal summon here, uh, unless we only open Abyss, and then, you know, we'll only, we'll, then we'll summon that, but, uh, you know, obviously you would rather go for the Grimness. Uh, for additional consistency, of course, we have the three focalized Aquamere. Uh, like I said, we are playing three of the Gishki Aquamere. Uh, in a deck like this, a build like this, where you're looking to loop the Gust Kraken, you definitely want the three regular Aquamere, because the latter effect here will allow you to shuffle this back from the graveyard to add back a, a ritual monster from grave to hand. So if you got two of this, uh, as well as the Aquamere, you can use Aquamere, send a Kraken, summon a Kraken, then shuffle the Aquamere back and add the second Kraken back to your hand. And again, between the salvages and the shadows and the grimnesses, the search shadows, uh, it's not hard to have another ritual spell and then summon another Kraken. We also have the preparation of rites as like 
kind of like salvage it's a little bit more flexible it can only search the gust kraken uh, because it only searches level seven or lower rituals so it can't grab naramanas but uh that's fine uh you know if you're in the midst of looping gust krakens the idea is that you can add one of these from deck to hand and then also get your aquamira back to continue to ritual summon it's a little bit more situational in a build like this though but i think it's still fine uh if you wanted even more consistency you could add one for one to get the beautiful Princess a little bit more often, and turn the Grimness line a little bit more often as well. But uh, I've liked to fill out the rest of the main deck slots here with just a little bit of disruption. Uh, the Ash Blossoms, the Imperms, uh, as well as Call Bice for Ash Blossoms, because the Ash Blossom uh, really, really hurts this deck uh, very much. This is easily like the hardest counter to this deck. So I like having the Call Bice here. Um, and yeah, I think that actually covers pretty much the entire main deck there. For the extra deck, uh, I mean, it's the you know, it's the Ritual event, so we literally have three cards in here that we can't even use just to round it out. Although, it might be worth it to have fewer cards in the extra deck. The reason I maxed out on the extra deck is because I was planning on playing, uh, like, Prosperity, but I ultimately decided not to. I think I put in, like, the Call Buys instead, so uh, that's why we still have some leftover cards here that we cannot use at all in the extra deck. But uh, we can use Dynamundo, and there is actually, we're going to see a game where this card does come up, so... Uh, Dynamundo, I definitely do recommend having. Uh, the Herald of Mirage Lights, I really only recommend having this because there are some times where, like, if you have, like, Grimness plus Abyss, you can potentially link them and then use the Naramanas to bring back the Abyss, although I usually do that by using the uh, Abyss to uh, use a use that as, like, Ritual Fodder for the Naramanas. Again, we'll see in a game an example where I end up doing that, but... And then Cross Sheep, like... There's not very many board states I found with this particular deck where you can end up cross sheeping, but I guess if you have like a super win more hand, you might be able to pull it off. But again, uh, I maxed out the extra deck here because I was originally playing Prosperity, but ultimately end up cutting it. So um, yeah, I think you could definitely also get away without playing Naramana. So uh, if you are looking for a kind of like cheap deck that you can play, uh, without having to invest in the URs. Uh, you can also, I guess, get away without the Focus Stop Premiere, but your deck's going to be a lot less consistent. But, you know, if you really have to, you can definitely play without these two cards. And I guess instead of Focus Stop Premiere, then you can play, like, Pot of Prosperity. Uh, if you happen to have Upstarts, you can play those. Just other consistency-boosting cards like that, right? Like, actually, is Extra even... I didn't even think about this. Is Extra legal in this event? No, there's no way it's not. Okay, yeah. But Prosperity, I do know is, right? Actually, is it? Yes, it is. So, yeah, again, uh, Neuromonas is very optional. Focus Aquamere is definitely optimal, but again, you can cut it if you absolutely need to for Prosperity and a couple of other cards. But, all right, I think that, go ahead, that goes ahead and covers the build here. So, um, I've talked about every card individually. I don't think I really need to break it down card by card at this point. So, let's just go ahead and take a look at these replays here. Alright, this first duel is going to be against Novele. So it's going to be a fairly quick one, all in all. But, I think it does a good job of showing what, like, the average turn one of this deck kind of looks like. So, we'll go ahead and start here. Plus, I mean, it's an event. Like, people always tend to concede pretty early in events. So... We can take the first turn. I'm going to start by using Grimness for the Abyss, and then Abyss is going to grab us the Shadow. Uh, I then am going to use the Focus Aquamere effect to grab the Evagishki Naramanas. Uh, now, if I had a Salvage in hand, I would grab the Vision and then use the Vision for the Naramanas, so that way I can cycle both the Vision and the Shadow for searches, and then Salvage and get them both back again. I actually, now that I'm saying this out loud, I really am thinking about putting Prosperity back in, just to dig for Salvage specifically, because uh, that card is like super busted in this deck if you open it, but anyway. Uh, here it's fine, we can still use the Shadow to grab the Aquamere. Now, I'm going to use the Aquamere and actually sack off both Abysses and Gust Kraken for the Naramanas. That might look a little bit weird, because you might be thinking, well, Hex, you had the Grimness right here. That can count for one whole uh, Ritual Summon. Why would you sack off all your things like that? Isn't that a huge minus and advantage? Uh, but it's actually not, because the Naramanas gets to bring back the Gishki Abyss. Gishki Abyss will then get another Surge, because, again, not once per turn. This card's actually just insane. I'm going to grab a Shadow to get another Ritual Spell. Now I can use the Aqua Mirror to shuffle the... Uh, itself back in and add the Gust Kraken. And as you can see, now I get to summon the Gust Kraken as well. And I didn't even really end up losing any advantage at all at the end of it. 
Uh, Gus Kraken will allow me to look at two of the cards in my opponent's hand, and I get to put one of them back. I see a call by, and I also see the uh, level one Novelis. I put back the level one Novelis, setting the call by, and then end phase I get to use the focus Aquamir in order, in order to set up the Aquamir illusion. So. Uh, what this does is now I have the negate set up with an Aramata so I can negate one of my opponent's monster effects and shuffle it back into the deck. And then Aquarium Illusion will allow me to do it all over again. So, uh, again, I would consider this a very average turn one setup for this deck in this event, from, from my experience anyway. So, and as you can see, yeah, that's going to be a fairly quick one. Opponent isn't going to be able to play through it, I guess they didn't even want to try to. Again, that's how events, this is usually how event games go. You like kind of set up and your opponent usually concedes shortly afterward. But let's go ahead and see another duel here. All right, this game's gonna be against Makanka, which the definitely the vast majority of my duels have been against. If I recall correctly, this should be a duel where we actually see, see some really insane uh, Gust Crack and hand looping here. So, ah yes, this is the one. Uh, like I was saying in that last game, any hand in this deck where you open salvage is just so, so good. Um, this card is absolutely insane. Being able to, like, it's obviously, of course, a plus one, but it's a plus one for non once per turn rota effects, which is, uh, suffice it to say, super good. So, uh, here I'm going to activate the Aqua Mirror and grab the Grimness here. Grimness is going to normal summon and pull the Abyss from deck. Abyss effect will activate. For the shadow, I already have the Aquamere, but I'm going to need more ritual spells later, so I'm going to grab a shadow here now. Going to activate both the vision and the shadow for uh, a Gust Kraken and an Aquamere. I'll go and use the Aquamere to stack off the Grimness in order to summon the first Gust Kraken. So, uh, Gust Kraken effect will activate. Looking at my opponent's hand, I see Gamma Seal and then a Royal Gamma Seal. So, naturally, I put back the Royal Gamma Seal, right? <laughs> and, uh,. Uh, good to use Salvage to get back the Shadow and the Vision. So once again, I'm going to fire off the Vision effect, and Vision will add a second copy of Gust Kraken. Now I get to use this Aquamere in hand, sacking off the Gust Kraken in order to summon yet another one. So once again, we'll be looking at two cards in our opponent's hand and putting one of them back. This time I see Preparation of Rights and the Gamma Seal again. So I'm going to put back the Preparation here. I get to use the Aquamere's effect, because this is also not a once per turn effect, adding back the Gust Kraken. Going to fire off the Shadow, also not once per turn. For the Gishki Aquamere, also not once per turn. So, it's a running theme of this archetype. For some reason, nothing is a once per turn, except for Grimness. And the things that aren't uh, Grimness that are once per turn are all soft once per turn. So, final Gust Kraken is going to see that same Gamma Seal, as well as the Hidden Armory. It's so unlucky, like... If I had been, like, super optimal with my luck here, I actually could have left my opponent with just double Gamma Seal in hand, but... It was just unlucky to see that same Gamma Seal in every single... reveal, but, oh well. So, opponent's on Gamma Seal and two unknowns, but as you can see, that's gonna be enough for them to concede here. I will say, I will say this much, there is a world where maybe they could have had an out, right? Um, it's definitely not impossible, but uh, I will say with the triple hand rip, uh, especially taking out the preparations and the hidden army, both searching consistency boosting cards from their deck, uh, it does end up becoming a lot less likely that they're going to end up having plays there. So there is that game. Let's go ahead and see the next duel here. Okay, so I figured I would show a game that isn't just my opponent snap conceding right away. Although, again, in events, that kind of is few and far between. <laughs> but uh, we do actually have a pretty nice back and forth against a Mikanko opponent here, so... Naturally, because they're on Makanko, we're going to be going first. And this hand's, again, it's pretty average. Uh, the Grimness uh, is going to get negated by the Veiler. Actually, this hand would have been pretty good. Like, I think I could have actually made use of preparation to both add the Kraken and also get back the Ritual spell if the Veiler had not negated the Grimness here. Now, I kind of just have to use the preparation to, like, add Gust Kraken. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do kind of the same thing I did during that first game where... It looks like I'm about to minus three here. By just sacking, or actually minus four, by just sacking off my whole hand and field to summon the Naramanus. But what I'm actually doing, once again, is I'm going to wheel back the Abyss to the field and then search with it. And then the Aquamere will get the Gust Kraken back to my hand. So in turn, I'm able to 
summon these cards here. Actually, I don't know if I'm able to summon the Gus Crack in here. No, I can't, because I don't have the Grimness on the field. But I do get to use Aquamere Illusion. Oh, sorry, the uh, Focus Aquamere to set the Aquamere Illusion. So we do have that going for us. Opponent, thankfully for us, is going to Lava Golem and then pass. Um, I can only imagine they were just on an awful bricked hand here uh, to just only go Lava Golem pass. But you know what? We'll take it. There are so, so many times uh, already playing in this event where my opponent has just done this and then OTK'd me. So uh, I will definitely take the, the Lava Golem pass here. Uh, in any case, I'm just going to switch Lava Golem to attack mode and then summon the Shadow. Just move to battle. This threatens my opponent, uh, puts them on a two-turn two clock, makes them draw an out here. They do end up with the Ha Ray, but uh, thankfully we have the Amperm to negate the search there. And also thankfully they only had the Mayawashi Dory, so uh, no searching, no summoning from deck or any of those other bouncing, taking control of the other equip spell effects. We are taking this damage from Lava Golem, but things are actually going to be fine here. Uh, I'm going to use Salvage, or so I think, until they use it on the Grimness. Now, it might look like I'm not able to power through this Haray, but I actually am. I'm going to use Aquamere Illusion, right? Summon the Gust Kraken. No effect, because it's not a Ritual Summon, but I get to actually perform a Link Summon this event for the one and only Dynamondo. Uh, this card's gonna come in so clutch here. Right, I'm gonna shuffle back the Gus Kraken and their Hare, move to battle phase, and that's going to clear the board and allow me to swing in for lethal with both my monsters. Whew. This was actually the game where I was like, okay, okay, now I can make a video. <laughs> now I can make a video for this event deck because, I don't know, I mean, the past few times, like I said, I don't normally do like videos for events because not only do I personally find the events themselves boring a lot of the time and I, again to be completely frank this event here is not much of an exception but on top of that the games are just usually not that exciting to watch right um, usually in event duels as you've been seeing uh, the opponent just ends up conceding as soon as you set up um, or they're on, like, it seems like every event there's, like, some going second deck that's just gonna, like, OTK you, right? So, you play into that, and they disrupt or board wipe you, and then you just lose anyway, so, I don't know. Uh, but with this, like I said, this event, we did have the hand loops, which I thought was cool, and we had this duel here. We actually do have one more game we're gonna see. I, I'm kind of talking like it's the end of the video, but let's go ahead and finish it off with this last duel here. And for our final game, we're actually on the mirror match. Uh, it's going to be us against another Gishki deck. Alright, looks like we are going to be taking the first turn here. Love to see that. And, um, yeah, this hand's fine, you know. The double Aqua Mirror is a little bit, like, you know, not like the most awkward, but very slightly off. It would have been really bad if we had gotten, like, this, uh, View Tunifold or Grimness negated here, right? Like I said, Ash Blossom is kind of the next. I guess Valor too, honestly, and Imperm. Ash Blossom, Valor, and Imperm are like this deck's biggest bane, but... Yeah, uh, like I said, I'm kind of doing the same line here that I've been doing, where I do the Naramana summon using the Abyss and other monsters as a material to get the Surge, and then the Aquamere gets me the Gust Kraken back anyway. So, you know the drill by this point. I wonder, like, if I could be building this kind of combo line into, like, more of an expansive... I don't know. Like, I have a bit of experience with, like, Naramatis and Gishki Sprite, but I'm not too experienced in, like, Gust Crack and Hand Looping, so... Here, obviously, I put back Grimness, and then... We'll wheel the Gust Kraken back to hand uh, before passing back over to our opponent. Oh, and then Alchemir, of course, gets to set up the Illusion as well for... Threatening the double monster effect negate. Alright, they're gonna end up normal summoning that abyss we saw. I'm gonna start off with Ash Blossom, not even committing to using my Naramanas just yet. And then my opponent concedes, so. <laughs> I don't know, like I said, it's like I was saying at the end of that last duel, you know? It's like, I kind of feel like 
a lot of the time, like even now, having recorded these games, I'm like, you know, there was that one five turn duel, and there was the the triple gust crack and hand looping, but. I don't know, for the most part, what you're seeing here and also in the first replay are just, like, a very succinct summary of what, you know, event games are like. So, I don't know. I don't mean to complain so much. Well, you know what? Honestly, I kind of do mean to complain so much. Like, I don't know. I, I just usually don't like focusing on, like, negatives or complaints. But Master Duel events are definitely one where I am more willing to be a bit more vocal about that because I think that we could do so much better it's just a shame that we're not getting more stuff like NR format or Limit 1 uh, that really force you to, like, that really shake up what your deck building is. It's like, I'm just so sick of, like, this, you know, oh, do do a summoning type that's clearly being pushed by the latest stuff we've been putting out. You know, get that, get those Novelis cards, do that Labormancer secret pack, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, eh, I don't know, it's just like... It is what it is, I suppose, but let me know what you think of this event and the Master Duel events in general in the comments section below. I would, of course, as always, ever love to hear from you all, too, but uh, for the time being, let's just go ahead and move now to our outro. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching all the way to the very end. That means a whole lot to me, and it's also a fantastic way to support the channel. And if you're interested in supporting the channel in other ways besides YouTube, there are plenty of ways to do that. If you check out the description below, you'll find a bunch of links down there. One of them goes to my Patreon. You're actually seeing the names of everyone subscribed to the Patreon on the screen right now. So if you're interested in getting your name in the credits here at the end, if you want to see more daily Master Duel content, or if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one private coaching sessions, I offer all of that on Patreon. I also stream live on Twitch. Feel free to go ahead and click that link and follow and or subscribe there. I also have the Discord community if you want to follow that link where hundreds of duelists have already signed up. Free to join and you can just come hang out, talk about the game, and chill in general. The final link that's going to be in the description is my Twitter. You can follow that if you want some more notifications of what's happening with the channel. So all in all, thank you all so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.